All right, so here we go. Welcome back. The Regents is tomorrow. Good luck. I'm sure you guys are going to do well. We are just going to do some last minute preparation. So I'm not sure if the chat is on, um, but um, we are hopefully, hopefully, you guys can see it. I tried streaming it this afternoon and it worked. So hopefully you guys see it. So we are going to go over this regions, the January, the global history and geography regions from January 26, uh, 2016. As you know, the new transition regions exam is going to be a slightly different. Uh, it's going to be based from what I heard mostly on the, on the 10th grade material. So we are going to skip questions that I think are ninth grade questions. So nothing from the beginning. You, so usually we would start with question number 23, because that is what I think is the beginning of 10th grade stuff. So here we go. Now, let's see, I'm going to do, be doing this regions with you guys. So. Let's see how many I can get, right? So, so that's good. Let's go. So 23, uh, January 2016. So in the 16th and 17th centuries, the heliocentric theory became the center to be for debate between. All right, so this will probably be on the regions. The heliocentric theory, because it's talking about whether or not the sun is the center of the universe. Now, again, if that's if they put scientific revolution in the regions, from what I'm hearing, it should be there. But I'm not completely sure because it's the first time the transition region is given. So, but just let's just go over it. So, for 23, is it one capitalism, capitalism and communism? Absolutely not. Is it two science and religion? Yes, science and religion because heliocentric theory deals with the a debate whether the sun is the center of the universe before the heliocentric theory proposed by Copernicus. Uh, people thought that Earth was the center of the universe, but he said it's not. So it's not colonialism and nationalism, and it's for it's not isolationism and globalism. All right, I'm on air. Okay, so question 24. In which way did the ideas of enlightenment influence the French Revolution? Is it one, superstition and ignorance were promoted? Is it two, principles of mercantilism were glorified? Is it three, the divine right theory of kings was challenged? Or is it four, punishment for criminal acts were rooted in vengeance? So when you see enlightenment, a lot of students uh, confuse enlightenment with scientific revolution. So I'm just going to make it easy on you. So when you see scientific revolution, think about science. It's just talking about scientific stuff. So it's Copernicus, it's Galileo. They want to challenge the teachings of the church, whether or not the sun is the center of the universe. You know, but when you're dealing with enlightenment, it's just politics. It's Jean Locke, it's you know, Montesquieu, you know, three branches of the government. You know, Montesquieu, you have Rousseau. You have other great, great enlightenment thinkers. But in this case, it's uh, influenced the French Revolution. So, superstition is ordered. The principle of markets was not glorified. Divine right, was Divine right of theory of kings was challenged. Three is this is the right answer. What is divine right? Divine right basically meant that king is there because God put him there. Divine. Divine means God. So basically, you know, in before that, before enlightenment, kings justified their power by stating that they are there because God put them there. So it's divine right. So I'm there because God put me there. You're not going to question God. That means you can't question me. 
Oh, I'm on air. Okay, perfect. Just double checking. Okay, so divine rights. So it's one one of the ideas that they challenged. They also challenged uh, you know, the fact. Also challenged the old uh, old system. They stated that people should be able to think for themselves. They promoted democratic reforms, but each Enlightenment thinker is different. So for the regents, I would recommend that you know John Locke, you have to know Rousseau, and you have to know Montesquieu, you know, the three branches. You're also going to see Montesquieu when you study U.S. history. You know, definitely know Rousseau. Question 25. Uh, 25, that's ninth grade, Latin American geographies. All right, we're going to skip question 25. We're going to go to question 26. It says, which statement best describes the consequences uh, consequence of Napoleon's failure? Let's zoom in a little bit. Napoleon's failure to understand Russian geography. So Napoleon and later in the 20th century, out of Hitler and Nazi Germany, Hitler faced this, exactly the same problems as Napoleon. You know, Russia is cold. It's really cold. And, you know, it's, is it one, rush, rough waters of Baltic Sea destroy his fleet? Absolutely not. Harsh winter cut off his army from needed supplies? Absolutely true. Napoleon had a better army than, you know, than Russia. They had the best army in Europe at the time. But he lost because uh, he could not conquer Russia. It was too cold. And what actually what Russians did is when he when Napoleon marched to Russian capital Moscow and he wanted to take the resources, what Russia did is they burned the entire city of Moscow to deprive Napoleon of his resources. So Moscow was burned and they evacuated uh, the capital. So when, when the French army came to Moscow, which is the capital of Russia, they saw the city burn. So it was cold. It was freezing. They had no food, so a lot of them died, and eventually they were forced to go back. And eventually, Napoleon was defeated in 1815. You have to know that Battle of Waterloo, which led to Congress of Vienna, and Congress of Vienna wanted to establish, reestablish monarchy, reestablish the old uh, regime. So, no, that, but that is the answer. Harsh winter, cut off his army from much needed supplies. All right, so, base, it says, based on the answer to question 27 on the ex, on excerpt below, any knowledge of social studies. So, you're going to have this, these little quotes. It says right here, that in some few instances, the regular hours of work do not exceed 10, and exclusive of the time allowed for meals, sometimes they're 11, but more commonly 12, and then, in great numbers of instances, the employment is continued for 15, 16, or even 18 hours consequentially. All right, so I'm thinking it's okay that almost every instance the children or child labor, children work, work as long as the adults being sometimes kept uh, at work 16 or 18 hours without any intermission. All right, so they're talking about child labor during the Industrial Revolution. You have to know about the Industrial Revolution now. Brief, just to briefly go over, started in England. Why? Because England had abundant resources of uh, iron, and iron and coal. So it started in England. Second European country to industrialize was Germany. So what people were doing is they were moving from rural areas into cities to find jobs in those factories. And early factories were, uh, and early times those factories had really unsafe conditions. So you have to know the working conditions were not safe. People died in those factories. And, you know, people died. People were hungry. People were living in terrible, terrible conditions everywhere during the Industrial Revolution in every European country. So, but they had no choice. Industrial Revolution. Oh, and when it comes to Industrial Revolution, you also know, have to know important inventions. You know, state steam engine. Uh, telephone, telegraph, light bulb, uh, 
railroads. Railroads revolutionize travel. <laughs> so let's go to question. Let's get back to question 20. So this type of evidence was used in argument for this one, modifying laissez-faire principles. When you see laissez-faire, it means hands off. That's capitalism. That's free market. That is the wrong answer in this case. Did the opposing spread of communism? Actually, oh, what, am I doing? what am I saying? Number one is the right, is the right answer. That's that's why I have to read every single choice. Modifying, they want to modify principle practices of laissez-faire. They want to change something. They want to change pure cap uh, uh, principles of capitalism where that stated that children should work in harsh conditions. They want to modify, they want to change this. They want to change capital, capitalism. They want to change those conditions. So number one is the right answer, but let's go over every other choice. Opposing spread of communism, no. Three, restricting voting rights, no. Reforming land housing system, absolutely not. So sometimes when you read every single choice, it's good to read every single choice, so this way you don't make a mistake. So yeah, number one, modifying laissez-faire practices. It's early capitalism. It's a really harsh system. You had, so 1843, 19th century, and conditions were really harsh, modifying laissez-faire practices, 27 and so on. All right, so let's go. Based on the answer to question 28 on a passage below any amount of social studies. All right, so just to remind you guys, I'm doing, let's start to do this. So this is the quote. So before I read this, what I want to see on the bottom it says Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. So these are the guys who created communism. Communism was a theory that stated that workers should overthrow capitalism with a violent revolution. And that's a key word. The revolution has to be violent. And then in theory, the people would own everything. But in practice, everything was owned by a government. <coughs> in a very totalitarian system where press is controlled, where there's you can't own a business, government owns a business, every business, and there's a command economy. Oh, yeah, guys, when you think about communism, think about a command economy. That's the type of economy they, that they had, command economy. That's where government controls everything. It's a command, it's a planned economy. Yeah, plans. All right, so let's get back to the quote. The bourgeoisie means the rich, by rapid improvement of all instruments of production, by immensely facilitating means of communication, draws all nations, even more, the most barbarian, into civilization. The cheap prices on commodities and heavy artillery with which it batters down all Chinese walls, with which it forces the barbarians in densely obstinate hatred of foreigners to capitulate. It compels all nations on payment of extinction to adopt the bourgeois mode of production. It compels them to introduce what it calls, uh, what it calls civilization into their midst to become bourgeois themselves. In the word, it creates war after its own image. All right, so these guys came from Germany, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Germany was the second country after England to industrialize it based these same problems, child labor, harsh working conditions, you know, in those factories. So they had a sizable following in Germany. Uh, so which statement supports the point of view expressed in the smashes? Is it one, bourgeoisie needs to use military force to open markets? Absolutely not. These guys were against bourgeoisie. The two bourgeoisie are backwards compared to barbarians. Uh, I'm not sure how this makes sense. I don't think that's the right answer. Three, foreigners and bourgeoisie must work to get to end extinction of cultures. Absolutely not. Four, cheap prices and industrial improvements are tools used by bourgeoisie to impose its values, which is correct answer, the correct answer. So cheap prices and industrial improvements are used by the rich to basically impose their will upon everybody else. So that is what they're trying to argue in this passage. And you don't have to think a lot about this passage because it's only stating you to interpret what they're trying to tell you. All right, so question 29. 
Okay, so we have this these three bullet points, and you might get these types of questions. Just a, a reminder, you know, the new regions, instead of 50 questions, it's going to have 30 questions based on 10th grade material. So let's see. So the date, it's 1791. It says Declaration of the Rights of Women and Female Citizens, parentheses, France. So next is, I mean, 1791. All right. Next, it's 1829, Prohibition of Sati, India. 1857 and 1882, Married Women's Property Acts, Great Britain, which change in perception is suggested by these international developments regarding women. So I'm seeing these three bullet points and I'm guessing women got more rights. Uh, gradually. So is it one decrease in political power for women? No. To decline in economic status for women? No. I mean, this. Three, a growing concern for treatment of women. Not really. Four, an increase in global. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's three, a growing concern of treatment of women. Because uh, one doesn't make any sense to decrease the plan economic status, increasing global expectation of women. So, growing concern. Uh, for the treatment of women. Three is the right answer, I think. Okay. Okay, so. Three. Okay, so uh, I'm getting messages. The introduction. The introduction. Okay, so. Uh, can't really see the messages now, but oh yeah, I, I'll go over the essay parts if that's what you guys are playing. I will go over how to do how basically briefly how, how to do essays. But yeah, question thirty: The Haitian Revolution and Sepoy Rebellion happened in response to is it one European colonial policies, two indigenous ethnic rivalries, three urban developments or four religious divisions. So Haitian Revolution and Sipo Rebellions. Sipo Rebellion, India, Haitian Revolution, Haiti. Sipo Rebellion, you know, Indian soldiers were unhappy because the British were using cow fat and pig fat to grease their guns. And as you know, cows are sacred in India. And that offended a lot of Indian people who are followers of Hinduism and pigs uh, using pig fat affected a lot of indians who are followers of islam so and but they wanted to kick up kick europeans out because europeans were using imperialism to dominate these countries that one european colonial policies absolutely right it's not two indigenous ethnic rivalries it's not three urban development and it's not for religious division. The answer for this one is one, European colonial policies. All right, so let's go to question 31. Notice, they always look at the source, always look at the bottom. You can give you a hint, New York Times, 1915. So right away I know it's talking about, it's gonna talk about World War I. And it says World War I right here. Okay, notice travelers attending intending to embark on the Atlantic Ocean are reminded that the state of war exists between Germany and her allies and Great Britain and her allies, that the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles, that in accordance with formal notice given by the Imperial German government, vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any of her allies will be liable for the destruction of those waters that travelers sailing the wars on ships of Great Britain or her allies do so their own risk. So I know what happened in World War One. Germany was using a new weapon. What was that weapon? A submarine. Germans were really good at making submarines, and they're still making some of the best submarines in the world. Uh, well, they're not making nuclear subs anymore. I don't think so. But yes, German submarines technology is one of the best. So. Which technology, logical innovation of World War I is most closely associated with this German notice? So let's see. Oh, submarines right here. 
Absolutely. It's not machine guns, it's not tanks, it's not airplanes. They were sinking ships. So basically we were saying, because, because they were at war with Britain, anybody, uh, uh, so Great Britain or any of her allies who were in those waters would get sinked. That was their notice. So it's submarine. All right, so question 32. What was the main goal of Zionism? All right, is it one, forming a representative government in China? Two, establishing a Jewish homeland in a region of Palestine? Is it three, improving standard of living in developing countries? Or is it four, creating an international peacekeeping organization to solve conflicts? You need to know a lot about that, but basically if you see Zionism on regions, think about uh, Israel and Palestine. So it's basically establishing a Jewish homeland in a region of Palestine. All right, so 32. Question 33. Which of these events occurred in the Soviet Union, was uh, that occurred in the Soviet Union, was a direct cause of the other three? All right, so this is an interesting. Is it famine in Ukraine? Is it implementation of five-year plans? Is it establishment of collective farms? Aha, so collective farms. Remember, Soviet Union had a lot of these uh, where they forced people to work in government-owned farms to complete these five-year plans. Also, or is it for development of heavy industry? Mm, it's not one. It's not four. Is it two or three? Let's see. Exception collective farms. Contribution five year plans. I think the planned economy was, uh, I think, I'm thinking it's two. 33 has to be two because five year plans came before because uh, the Soviet Union had a planned economy. But collective farms came early, relatively early. So 33 three could also be the right answer. But two sounds like the best possible answer, 33. I want to double check 33. January, January 2016, January 2016, scoring key, uh, no. 33, what I have, 33, 33, 33. Oh, we're right, 33 is two. Okay, January 2016, just double checking, 33 is two. Implementation of five-year plans. Yeah, five-year plans, which where they told everyone to uh, basically produce certain amount of goods in five years. There were ineffective plans because they never worked, but this led to establishment of collective farms, factories, and which forced fe for feminine in Ukraine known as Holodomor. Five-year plans, which is the command economy that the Soviet Union had. And as you remember, command economy, that's communism. Communism Communism has a command economy and a totalitarian political system. Very important to differentiate between the, these two. Communism, economy, command economy, system, totalitarian system. Totalitarian system basically meant that there was no freedom of press, no freedom of speech. You do what government tells you to do. All right, so basically answer to question 34 on the map below any launch of social studies. All right, so you have this, this little map. Let's zoom out. A little bit. Actually, let's zoom in. It says European industrial production in 1929, 1932. Right away, I know it's talking about uh, the depression that hit the world uh, in that time. Guys, when you study U.S. history next year, you're going to learn about the Great Depression, which started in 1929 with the stock market crash, that which affected the United States. But the United States wasn't the only country that got affected by it. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you don't need to know about the United States for these regions, but here got affected substantially. So 1929, 32. So we see, what's the question? Based on this map, which region experienced the most severe drop in industrial production between 1929 and 1932? Uh, so you see this? It says over 30% fail, fall of industrial production. And this, guys, is 
the central year right there would be the Soviet Union. That's Eastern Europe. That's the West. Even so, right here, East, West, North, South. So that's Central Europe, which is this right here, Central Europe. All right, so extreme nationalism. So I know they're talking about Nazis, extreme nationalism, and fascists, individuals existing for the good of the state, unquestionably to the leader, are characteristics of fascism. All right, so guys, let's talk about fascism and Nazism. They're very similar, and a lot of people get these confused, but basically for the regions, I'm not gonna make it uh, complicated, but fascism, when you think about fascism, you have to think about Italy and Benito Mussolini. And Nazis were, uh, were basically Germans, Nazi Germany. Uh, they were very similar, but Germans were more focused on race, on the concept of getting of pure uh, European race. You know, blonde hair, blue eyes. They were obsessed about it. But uh, fascists were not, especially early on, they were not obsessed about race as much, obviously during the Second World War. When they were allied with Nazi Germany, they collaborated, you know, in Holocaust and other atrocities by, you know, deporting a lot of their people to concentration camps and you know, to Germany. But in this case, it's fascism. It's not democracy. Democracy is where you, where people have the right to vote uh, to their voice. It's the rule of the people. They can vote. You know, they have free speech, free press. Theocracy, that's 1979 Iran, which is partially theocracy. It's not completely a theocratic government, you know, government of Iran, uh, as we talked about before. You know, they have elections, just like they have in democracy, but they're heavily influenced by the religion, by religion, you know, after 1979 Islamic Revolution, which will be through the Shah. And liberalism has nothing to do with it. So, 36. The Soviet Union's response to formation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, was to create what? Is it one, the Marshall Plan? Is it two, the Warsaw Pact? Is it three, Truman Doctrine? Or is it four, European Union? So, basically, after the fall, so let's talk about the Cold War right? briefly. After World War II, uh, communists decided to, you know, Soviet Union decided to control chunks of Eastern Europe and establish a whole bunch of satellites, countries that had communist governments, which were puppets, basically puppets of the Soviet Union, which did everything Moscow, everything Soviet Union told them to do. And some of the countries they actually annexed, you know, when talk about Baltics, but where what the united states and western europe did is they create something known as nato nato meant that if the soviet union was to attack any part any country that belongs to nato let's say they decided to attack west western germany west germany because germany was actually divided back then between east germany which was controlled by the soviet union and west germany which was democratic and heavily influenced by which was democratic that's why the soviet union built the Berlin Wall. In this case, the response was to create the Warsaw Pact, which was a collection of countries, you know, at the time it was Poland and other countries that, Hungary, I think, that compri compri were comprised in the Soviet bloc to counteract NATO. So NATO basically said that, you know, if the Soviet Union attacked Germany, West Germany, Every other country in NATO would attack the Soviet Union. So, and that's where we get MAP, which is mutually assured destruction. And in the 1970s and 60s, the threat of nuclear war was real. Actually, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, we came that close to ending to the end of the world. So what President Jeff, well, I'm going to talk about more when I do a video about US history, but yeah, we came really close to ending the world. 
to the end of the world in the 60s. It came really, really close, literally within seconds. We, we got lucky, but yeah, worse of that. And what was the Cold War? Cold War was the, Cold War was the ideological, not conflict between, you know, the Soviet Union and the West, the United States. You know, we had Korean War, we had the war in Vietnam. And you know what the United States wanted to do is they had an autonomous containment. I don't know if it's going to be on the global region's containment. They wanted to stop the spread of communism. That was their theory, contain the spread of communism. Uh, there was a dominant theory which stated that you know, if one country became communist, every other country would become communist as well. And yeah, we can't have that. And communists wanted to spread their ideology. They did. So let's see. Oh, this, that's, that's a fun cartoon. You're going to see this. So basically, I'll answer to question 37 on the cartoon below and you know, some social sites. So let's see. I mean, you could recognize their faces. That, this guy looks like Hitler, and this guy looks like Stalin. It says, forgive me, comrade, but it seems such a good opportunity. So 1941. What happened in 1941? Well, June 22nd, I think that's when uh, Nazi Germany invaded Soviet Union. So uh, let's talk a little bit about it. So. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it, but early in the war, so actually World War II started in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland, right? September 1st, 1939 to be exact. But a lot of people don't know that the Soviet Union was actually aligned with Nazi Germany back then in terms that they both of them invaded Poland. I'm not sure how close their alliance was. Maybe they weren't realized, but I mean, they invaded it together. They were friends in that sense. They invaded Poland together and they divided Poland. Now, of course, you know. So, Hitler, is, see the Hitler stabbing Stalin in the back? So, it looks like betrayal. The Hitler's action expressed by this cartoon led Stalin to just want to adopt policy of appeasement. No, that what, appeasement is something that early in the war, something that the British and did, especially Chamberlain, Prime Minister of Britain. So when Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia, you know, they didn't do anything. Because in Austria, I mean, when Hitler started with his invasions, you know, early on, 1938, I believe. Uh, they didn't do anything because they didn't want to start a new another war. But they thought that you know if Hitler was to take Czechoslovakia, and they would just need to appease him. He wouldn't do anything. But Hitler wouldn't stop there because Hitler had a theory of expansion. Lebensraum, uh, something with an L. It's called. They need more living space, living strong. So take, is it to take over Germany in his industries? No, is it three giant allies and and a fight against Germany? Hitler is part of Germany. Join allies. So Hitler is joining the allies to fight against. Oh, wait a minute. Um, what am I doing? Three is the right answer. Hitler's action is expressed in this cartoon. Let Stalin to. Three is the right answer. John Allies. So Stalin decided to join Allies in the fight against Germany. Yes. Stalin wanted Stalin the Soviet Union declared war against Germany after Germany invaded the Soviet Union. He felt betrayed. So actually when Hitler attacked uh, the Soviet Union on June 22nd, Stalin, what they actually think, uh, what they said that, was that Stalin fell into big depression. He was sad. He didn't couldn't believe that Hitler betrayed him like that. So for one month, he would he locked himself in Kremlin, uh, which is like the house, the, like the White House in, in Moscow, and he wouldn't speak to anyone. He was really upset about about it. He couldn't believe that Hitler would betray him like this. You know, it's not for the size of the Soviet army. It's not to reduce the size of the Soviet army. No, no, it's to rejoin the allies in the fight against Germany. Can I pause by doing great DBQSA? Well, uh, DBQs are the easy part of the region. So we're going to get back. We're going to get to that in a moment. Let, uh, we're just going to finish the Moscow choice, and we're, we're going to briefly talk about that as well. 
38. Which statement about the impact of geography on the culture and history of the Middle East region in the 20th century is the most like, accurate? Is one. So when I think about Middle East in the 20th century, Middle East has a lot of oil, a lot of oil. You know, oil powers everything. Oil powers cars, machinery, airplanes, you know, engines, the plastic that you use, that's oil. Oil is everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, these, these corporations are making billions upon billions from oil. And, you know, we actually can have elect we can have electric cars right now. Electric car was invented decades ago, but they're never going to be available in the market because as long as there's oil, as long as there's money to be made from oil, these companies, these corporations are never going to allow electric cars and other cars as well to dominate the market. I mean, we have electric cars, but they're really expensive. They're not reliable for the most part, but you know, oil dominates. You know, that creates pollution, which leads to global climate change, I guess. But that's another topic. So, is one desert have prevented military inv invasions? Two, uneven distribution of resources have led to conflict. Three, abundance of water has contributed to agricultural self sufficiency. Or four, mountains have halted cultural diffusion. Um, <laughs> it's not one. We can cross it out. He's always used process of elimination. Abundance of water in the Middle East? No. They don't have abundance of water. So when you think about Middle East, you have to think about of countries such as Iraq. You know, in 2003, when the U.S. invaded Iraq, you know, one of the first thing that uh, our troops did was secure oil places, secure those oil uh, resources, oil fields. Yes, oil is like the coal, like gold. <laughs> or, you know, our troops, uh, US troops secured those gold. And the sad part about it was that the museums that has the great historical relics were looted by terrorists and by looters in Iraq once Saddam was overthrown. And there were nobody to protect those uh, museums because our soldiers were only focused on protecting but mostly focused on protecting oil fields at the time. All right, but I'm not going to get into that. So it's uneven redistribution distribution of resources, which in this case it's oil, led to conflict. That's the only one that makes sense. Now, 38 should be two. Mountains, right? We have mountains. All right, so let's go to question 39. East is red. So when you think about red, I'm thinking communism. East is red and sun is rising. China has brought forth a Mao Zedong. Oh, it says basically answer question 39 and 40 on the song lyrics below in larger social studies. So East is red and sun is rising. China has brought forth a Mao Zedong, leader of China. He amasses a fortune of people. Hurrah, he is the people's great savior. Chairman Mao loves the people. He's our guide to build a new China. Hurrah, he leads us forward. Oh, my song, Communist Party is like the sun. Wherever it shines, it is bright. Wherever it's, there's a Communist Party, hurrah. Those people are liberated. So what So what Communists came to power, whenever they came to power, they wanted to get the support of the common people. So they promised them bread, you know, land and peace. 96 is Chinese song. So, so, all right. So, what is it mean idea? Is it song will never set on Chinese communism? Is it two communist policies will liberate Mao Zedong? <laughs> no, obviously not. It's not two. Three. Chinese people become wealthy under communism. No, I don't think it implies. That. I don't think it's three. Is it four? Mao Zedong will lead a communist party in building a new China. All right. Yeah, he, it says he's our guide. So guide leads. When you see a guide, when you have a guide, let's say you want to explore the great outdoors, or you came to a foreign country, let's say France, and you don't know anything, you have a guide to lead you. So I said right here, Mao Zedong will lead the Communist Party to build in China. Four is the only one that makes sense. Right, so anytime, you, if, let's say you got stuck on a question. 
and you're not you might not get every question correct that's that's fine you know you, you te- most many of your teachers will not get all those questions correct either that's why they have an answer key and you know i've had private conversations with many history teachers and so some of those questions you know they've been honest that you know sometimes they would have a question or two on the regions that you know they don't know the answer to or they have to double check like you know like i did with that question over there so it's okay if you don't know every single question but just try your best uh, so in this case this chinese almost like been sung during the return of hong kong now that happened in the 90s is it the boxer rebellion no that's happened way before so the boxer rebellion is so the time and square incident no that's the cultural revolution that's the cultural revolution in china that's when they wanted to modernize uh, well make china more communist it was a little, slightly brutal revolution they some of them executed a lot of intellectuals but yeah cultural revolution led by youth so even if we look it up Google social political movement. Main purpose was Dutch people saw to saw to talk old ideas, old culture, old customs, and all habits, and all to bring areas of education. So oftentimes teachers and intellectuals would be victims of the cultural revolution led by youth. And every time the revolution is always led by young people. So you guys are the future. So. So it doesn't have to be a uh, violent revolution, but it's intellectual revolution. Let's say you guys come up with new ideas on how to make the country better. You know, that's that's good. Yeah, it would be intellectual. You know, like during the space age, that was a revolution that we had in the United States. So, okay, so during the Cold War, India's decision to support neither the United States nor Soviet Union was based on non-alignment. When you have, see India, that's non-alignment. Even today, India doesn't want to be allied with anyone. They're not allied with you know, Russia, with the United States, neither nor China, nor Iran. They don't want to be allied with anyone. And India is pretty much friends with most countries. I mean, they historically, they had some conflicts with Pakistan. Well, because the you know, partition, partition of India after World War II that led to the creation of Pakistan. But they had conflict with Pakistan, but right now they're, I think they're good with Pakistan and they had some conflicts with China. But for the most part, India it doesn't, is not allied with anyone. And of course, when it comes to Pakistan, there is still a region in India called Kashmir that's claimed by both. Pakistan and India, but as far as alliances goes, India is not allied with anyone. That containment, that's what the so United States want to do to stop the spread of communism. It's not isolationism and it's not separatism. Right, let's go down. Right, for Vietnam, so if the Cold War, as I'm here, as some of you have been saying, if it's going to be on the, the regions, then you got to know this. So it says Viet Cong, which was uh, North Vietnamese guerrillas. So, you know, Vietnam was divided between North and South Vietnam. Disappeared in, under, into jungle cover. Sandstorms halted helicopter flights into Iraq and Afghan mountain caves sheltered Osama bin Laden. Which generalization can be best applied to these situations? So, before even looking at the choices, I'm thinking that, you know, natural environment helped help these people or well, sometimes affected something. <laughs> what, advanced technology ensures victory? No, not always. To religious tensions often promote disagreements? No. Free most military confrontation, more biological weapons? No. Ge- geography often has influence on the course of conflict? Yes. Jungle cover. So during the war in Vietnam, the United States would do, would do would, uh, drop something on the Agent Orange, and which also affected our troops as well. Uh, and onto those jungles, but it's not really effective as well. So, halted helicopter flights into Iraq. Yeah, sandstorms, especially in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. 
and Afghan mountain caves. Hmm. Okay. So let's go to question 43. Major obstacle by creating policies that address the issue of global warming is, uh, is a conflict between one, migrating labor and native workers, the two, socialist government and democratic government, the three nations, nations possessing nuclear weapons and those without, those without, without what? Why is it blank? Is that a typo? Those without. Interesting. Economic development and environmental protection. Yes, I think it's four. Economic development is always tied to environmental protection. All right, so global warming. All right, now it's called, it's actually called climate change. That's a modern term for it. But 44, question 44. The practices of allowing, allowing animals to overgraze grasses and shrubs and of Clearing trees to use for fuel have caused cost is one coastal pollution to desertification. I'm sorry, guys, I can't really see the chat. I'm not sure if it's on. I'm trying to stream. This is I'm still learning how to stream. Uh, you know, eventually I'm gonna get better at it. But I'm, so this is my second day streaming. So coastal pollution, desertification, acid rain, and desalination. Uh, so over grass, grass and shrubs, and trees, not to use for fuels. And that's great. So to use for fuel. Lions over grass, grasses and shrubs. And clearing trees to use for fuel. It's not coastal pollution. It's not acid rain. It's not desalitation. Desalitation is when you take seawater and make it into fresh water. You know. Because you can't really drink seawater. Some countries are really good at doing that. But it's desertification. Deserts. It's, you know, cut, cut down plants. It's a desert. Okay, in the 1970s, Chinese government created one child policy. And they actually recently ended one child policy. That's when family can only have one child. Because they had too many people in China. One child policy, is it, is it over? You had to end one child policy a lot too. 2015. All right, so it's over. But in the 1970s, Chinese government created the one child policy because its leaders realized that there was a direct relationship between, relationship between population growth and what? One military strength? No. Two economic development? Yes. Three social mobility? Four political tolerations. Economic development. Because they had too many people, they couldn't feed, feed them. That's why the China created something known as one child policy. So today, China is the, has the fastest growing economy in the world. They have a, you yeah, know, that's a growing economy in the world, you know. Their future is bright. China has a, you know. So that's why they can afford to allow people to have more than one kid. Because they, nowadays they can feed them. All right, so question 46. One way in which, okay, we're going to skip this one because that's ninth grade. 47, that's ninth grade. 48. Austria Hungary and Samaritan to, to Serbia in 1914 and the United States military action in Afghanistan beginning in 2001, both reaction to acts of terrorism. As you know, what was the cause of World War One, guys? World War One assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, system of alliances, and you know, just nationalism, which reached the boiling point. So when there's a system of alliances, you know, if you pick up my friend, so like I remember, you know, in middle school and high school, you know, you know, I had I had my own friends, and there was another group. So let's say somebody picked on my friend, you know, we would all stick up for each other. You know, I would stick up for my friends. My friends would stick up for me, and you know, that's like a system of alliances. You help your friends out, but then, but in this case, both reactions to acts of ter terrorism. Yeah. You know, what? So, two thousand one. What happened in two thousand one? You know, September eleventh. Terrorist attacks that destroyed, you know, World Trade Center in New York's in the, in New York City. Terrorism. So, which leaders most directly associated with Cuban Revolution? Cuban Revolution. Uh, I'm thinking Fidel Castro. Is one of the choices? Yes. So Fidel Castro, and Guevara. Right. So I, I know it's late, guys. So I'm going to speed it up because you guys need to get a good night's sleep so you can 
crush that regions tomorrow. I'm sure you guys are gonna crush it, but we're gonna go quick. Question 50. The self closing war about Kamal, other Turk of Turkey, and recent lobby of Iran in this photo indicates that photographs indicates that leaders decided to modernize, westernize their nations. That's the right answer. It's nothing else. Makes sense. And but on that, I, I'm going quickly because I know the answers. I mean, I can see it. I've done history for a long time, but in all natural regions, guys, don't be quick. Read your choices carefully. Use the process of elimination. Don't do what I'm doing now. I'm doing it to speed up the time so you guys can get a good night's sleep because you need to be energized for the regions tomorrow. You know, they want to westernize them. Okay, the thematic as, as obviously we don't have time to do an essay, but we're just going to go over how to do it. So you're going to see something like this. Write a well-organized essay that includes an introduction, several paragraphs, addressing the task, below, and a conclusion. Now, I don't know how it's done right now, but normally it's supposed to be at least five paragraphs. You know, you have to have an introduction, you know, at least one or two paragraphs, you know, maybe three or in a conclusion. It all depends on the question. It all depends on the question. Look for the theme. In this case, it's imperialism. It says, since 1500s, countries have pursued a policy of expansion of this imperialism for a variety of reasons. This affects the effects of this policy can be viewed from different perspectives. Task. That's very important, guys. Follow task. If you want to score well on your regions, you have to follow this to the point. Once again, guys, we are on January 2016 regions. It's slightly old, but history is history. I'm only so select one country that engaged in imperialism since 1500s and first bullet point. One country. Very important. That's why it's important. Discuss the reasons this country engaged in imperialism. What is imperialism? That's one a strong country takes over a weaker one. Why? Because they want to control their resources. They want raw materials. They want to expand the empire, expand their sphere of influence. So, and discuss the effects of imperialism from the perspective of people, from the perspective of people, of society taking over, or and or the perspective of the conqueror. So you can choose. You can state, you know, I'm stated from perspective of people who were living, let's say, in India, which was conquered by Brit Britain, you know, in China, which was conquered from J by Japan, or perspective of the conqueror. I mean, whichever way it's easier. In my case, you know, personally, I don't like imperialism, but if I was to write this essay, I would probably choose the conqueror because it's easier to argue, you know, you can state that, you know, I need raw materials. I need to expand my sphere of influence. I need to civilize these people. You know, I know it's not, it's not a nice way to state it. And I personally, I, I don't like imperialism, but just, it, it will make it easier for you to write an essay. But of course, you know, you may use a country that engaged in imperialism since the 1500s from your study of global history and geography. Some suggestions you might wish to consider Portugal. But yeah, Portugal was actually the first country to engage in slavery. It started sugar plantations uh, off the coast of Af West coast of Africa, but I don't think that's you're gonna have that on the regions because that's not great. Spain, of course, like Latin America, that's not gonna be here. If you're gonna have imperialism on your regions, it's probably gonna be modern imperialism. Britain. That control, you know, India, and, you know, not only India, you know, vast uh, you know, colonies, they had colonies in, in the New World, in Americas. But, oh, very important, do not, don't use United States in your response. So you can't talk about the British colonies in the United States. Don't use it. You may only use, so in this case, if I was writing an essay about this, I would probably choose Britain. Uh, you know, British possession in India. I, would, I could also talk about Belgium in Africa, I and mean, uh, specifically Congo, Belgium-controlled Congo. You know, you could also talk about how Japan would be after Meiji Restoration. That's also really easy. Meiji Restoration, that's when they modernized Japan. That's when they uh, invaded. Because Japan was, is an island. It doesn't have a lot of natural resources, so they went to... Uh, China and Manchuria to get those resources. So they, that prompted them to create an empire because they didn't have any resources. So 
So you have to address all the aspects of the task. Don't use United States. And very important, you're not limited to these suggestions. What does it mean? So we have Portugal, Spain, Great Britain, France, Belgium, and Japan. But let's say I want to, I want to use Russia. I want, or I want to use Soviet Union. Can I use Soviet Union? Yes, I can. For example, I can use uh, Soviet imperialism, for example, how, or Russia, how Russia expanded in Central Asia, you know, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, or how Soviet Union expanded you know, in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia. I mean, how Soviet Union made, you know, Poland and Hungary, their satellites out to uh, their victory in World War II. So I can write about it because I'm not limited. That's very important. If you know something about something else, you can use it. But don't use the United States as the focus of your response. I prefer you guys not use the United States at all in USA unless you really have to. But you have, this is not US history. So in USA, to get to develop all aspects of the test, support the theme with facts, examples, and details. Is logical and clear plan uh, plan or organization intro conclusion and introduction body and conclusion. Uh, you know I've read essays, regions essays from kids that have introduction that was like one or two sentences. Now it doesn't have to be seven eight sentences. You know if you have, write really good, you know four sentences that has a thesis. You know that's good. You know well, introduction should. Yeah. Some teachers tell their kids to just copy the theme as the first two sentences of your introduction. And if you're really lost, if you're stuck, I guess you might do that. But I usually tell kids to keep stated, restating your own words. If you uh, don't know how to start your essay, you can use these words. You can state that, you know, throughout history, many countries just through, two words, throughout history. That's how I usually started my essays when I was in high school throughout history, and then I would go. You can apply it to anything. Throughout history, you know, I, could, I would say, you know, many countries have pursued positive imperialism to for their own benefit, you know, imperialism for their own benefit. But if you're really stuck in game, yeah, just restate the, these two sentences, and then the third sentence could be, you actually have to give a preview of which country you're going to pick. So let's say you pick Japan. You can say one of these countries was Japan after which expanded after the Meiji restoration, you know, two sentences about that, you know, one sentence about that. You don't have to write a lot, two sentences and closing sentence, you know. Maybe you're not even going to need a closing sentence, you know, if it's really good. It depends on how well you write. It depends on your school, it depends on your teacher. I, I, would, I mean, I'm old school. I mean, in my in school or that where I trained, they want kids to write closing sentences. So as long as you address these things, it should be good. So I don't want to keep you too much. It's almost 10 o'clock, guys. <laughs> so I need to get a good night's sleep. So let's just go with DBQs really quick. So what is the DBQ? You have those, these documents. They're really easy. Sometimes you're not going to have cartoons. Sometimes you're going to have documents. And there's no reason not to get 100. I mean, not to get all, every single point. And those documents, these documents are like, guys, if you watch basketball, you know, they, they're like free throws, you know, easy points. Because the answers are right there. You need to know anything about this historical time period. 1603, Takugawa. Yeah, so, you know, I gave DBQs to these types of DBQs. I remember giving them to middle school kids, elementary. Yeah, and they were able to answer them easily because I just told them, even though they knew nothing about this historical topic, because I just told them that as long as they read it, the answer was right there. They just need to look at the document. So, for example, let's pick a really short one because I don't want to keep you guys. That's going to be unfair. Uh, all right. So this excerpt is based on Peter Abraham's memories of his con Conversation with his black South African boss, Jim. Uh, when, when Jim left his petty election, Northern Transvaal, he had 
had to go to nearest police station or near the affairs department. He got his track pass, trick pass. This permitted him to make a journey to Johannesburg. And reaching the city, he got an identification pass on a six-day special pass. He paid two shillings a month for his identification pass. Uh, uh, the six-day special was the protection while he looked for work. He did not find work during his six days. So he didn't go to the office to renew his six-day special. He picked up his eighth day. He picked up on his eighth. He was picked up on his eighth day and spent two weeks in jail as a background person without residence of work. That told him that that told him to go to the pass office regularly. What's one way? The past loss affected his boss, Jim. Well, uh, right, let's see. It's 10 o'clock. My brain is not functioning well, but let's see. They're talking about apartheid, apartheid, which is segregation in South Africa, which is a racist policy like we had in the United States that separate people based on color. So one effect on him was that memories. He always, well, he was only given six days to find a job. A job, six days to find a job. I think that's what it is. It says right here, six days to find a job. And, you know, if he didn't, uh, couldn't find his job in six days, you know, he'd be arrested. But uh, you have to can be really short, you know, he was given six days to find a job. So it says. Six, well, six days protection. He was only given six days in the city. He was limited to six days. So just like that, I think. Let's double check. All right, so, so we're going to have this, that, this, you know, that history. Oh, you see right here? It, that's why I always tell kids to start. If you're stuck, start your essay with these two words. Make your life a lot easier. Develop and establish laws and orders for a variety of reasons. But also to, for the worries and the Takunawa Shogunate, Shogunate, Nazi orders of the laws of the Third Reich and the past laws of Republic of South Africa had many impacts on societies, regions, and groups of people. So you have to select two, law, two sets of laws mentioned in historical contest. So very important, use, you have to use the documents and knowledge of social studies, and you knowledge of social studies. So you have to use information from the documents and you also have to use outside information. For DBQs, you please use outside information. A lot of the times what kids would do is they would only use information from documents without using outside information, and that would get like a three or a two for that on their essay, which is not good. Select two sets of laws, special orders. So explain the government, what the government hoped to achieve. You have to address every bullet point this achievement by establishing the laws and orders to discuss the impacts of these laws and orders to on specific society, region, on group of people. Now, DBQ essay is easier because you are allowed to look at those documents. For a thematic essay, you know, you have to know your history. If you don't know your history, too bad. With DBQ, you're giving those hints. It's like an open book test. But you also have to use outside information, you know. So, for example, what kind of outside information we could have used right here? So, yeah. So let's, let's see Nazi orders of the Third Reich. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Night of the Broken Glass. Oh, that's when Nazis broke uh, the sh uh, basically destroyed shops. Crystal Nacht, owned by Jews. Crystal Nacht. 
Uh, Rising by ordinary Germans. Brown shirts. Revolution by the youth. Oh, outside information. You can state that, you know, in 1979, Iran, uh, I'm not, I don't want to compare Nazis to Iranians. That's in 1979, that's going to be mean, but you can state that, you know, a revolution led by, was led by the youth was also quite violent, but what's another, what's a better choice would be, you know, ISIS. Oh, ISIS would be an excellent choice. ISIS, or, you know, Arab Spring, which led to ISIS, not just ISIS, other, other groups, led to the rise of other groups, radical groups. You can use modern history, which also looted churches destroyed churches destroyed everyone this uh, kill, they killed a lot of christians in iraq and syria you know isis that's a, that's a, you know i'm using outside information you can say uh, similar things happened you know when after the arab spring you know in syria and iraq no that's outside information and, you know that's modern history and you teachers should have discussed at least a little bit about you know what's happening in Iraq with the Arab Spring, you know, and what is ISIS? I mean, towards the end, I mean, some teachers don't get to that, but they should. I mean, that's that's hot, that's history, that's global history. You know, we're living in it. And oh, also, how do you quote you when you do your documents? You have to refer to those documents. You have to state you know according to document A, or you have to. Write it in parentheses. How do you do that? You know, word that I say, you know, according to document one, or you can stay, you can also quote it like that. Document one, I actually prefer the second way because it doesn't interrupt the flow of the essay. Yeah, uh, let's see if it changes. Uh, if it's it's asking you to use at least four documents, please use four documents. Use outside information. Organize your essay. You guys are gonna crush up regions tomorrow. Good luck, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. You know, I'll be online for at least one more hour. So good luck. Get a good night of sleep. You know, and you should score really well tomorrow. Now, this is the first time this transition exam is given, so I don't know how it's gonna work. You know, once I see the the new exam, I will be. Uh, I have a better idea what it's about, but as of now, you know. Hopefully, you guys are not going to need me after today. Because you're going to crush that regions. But I'll be doing some videos about U.S. history later on. You know, for people who want to pass their U.S. history exam, which is coming up a little bit later. U.S. history regions and. You guys, I think, are going to take U.S. history regions next year. So that should be good. So good luck, guys. Hopefully, the stream worked. I, I don't know how to can enable the chat, but I just want, let's see if it worked. Good luck. Let's see. Just right here. We are right here. Stop. Good luck, guys.